Hi, friends. Welcome to Screens in Focus, the podcast where we dive into your favorite TV shows and movies. I'm Diana, and today we are joined by the amazing Renee for a special deep dive into the incredible journey of The Walking Dead's Rick Grimes. Hi, Renee. How's it going? Hello. I'm well. How about you? I'm doing so Oh, I'm doing so good because I've been waiting to talk with you. And so, because it's been a little bit, right? Since we last got together right before the holidays. So with all the trailers and just everything that's out there, all the articles, all the events that are happening with the ones who live, I'm just so excited. And so I thought it would be such a great idea to, you know, dive into Rick Grimes' journey before we get there. Yes. The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live will premiere on February 25th, and we're going to be covering those weekly. And I wanted to dive into Rick's pivotal moments and his leadership. And I know we're not going to be able to cover everything because there's just so much. It's so extensive. But I want to talk about things that uh, mean the most to us, what sticks out to us, and what our anticipation is on The Ones Who Live. So I'm just really excited about this conversation with you. I do want to let everyone know that we have shelved our uh, question of the day because we have so much to dig into here. But I also want to remind you to reach out to us. And of course, we appreciate your comments and want you to chime in because we want to hear from you. And you can do so at Screens and Focus. And you can get to all our social media at screensandfocus.com because your voice matters and we really want to hear from you. All right. So let's get started. Renee, is there any news that you want to share before we get into Rick Grimes? Well, the rumor has it that Daryl Dixon season three has been, you know, kind of a go. It's not been officially announced by MC, but Scott Gimple has confirmed it. So that's exciting. And then, of course, you know, the season two will be coming out at the end, so later in the year. I would I would think in the fall, kind of like they did for yeah. season one. I bet that's what they'll do. And then Dead City is rumored to begin filming in March, but they're not going to be filming in New Jersey and New York. I forget where it's at, though. <laughs> Just like, mm. I, I forget where. Anyway, I'll have to get back to you on that because I forgot where it's filming. So anyway, they've changed some filming. And then um, I wanted to give a little plug to the camp events that will be taking place on Memorial Day weekend in Peachtree City. They are having a huge lineup this year. They have, for the first time ever, Lenny James will be coming. So we're Yay! super excited for that. That's <laughs> Yeah. Um, other new first timers, Seth Gilliam, Layla Robbins, um, Michael Trainer is going to be there. Um, Daryl Mitchell is going to be there. And, you know, just a lot of new ones. But then we've got returning, you know, Pollyanna McIntosh will be there and Chandler Riggs. Um, I almost said Chandler Grimes. Paola <laughs> um, <laughs> will be there and Josh Hamilton. Um, Mo Collins will be there again. Yeah. So it's getting, and there's, another exciting um, announcement coming very soon also. So yeah, lots, oh, of, fun. lots of, lots of good stuff. So, you know, that's the camp events and you can find them on, you know, their website and social media, but it's exciting. And I do the panels for the um, event. So it's always exciting to see these uh, new people to come in that we get to talk to. So, so excited. <laughs> it is exciting because you get to uh, meet with people that you've have come throughout the years and mm -hmm. then the new people too. So, oh my gosh, it's going to be so exciting. <laughs> yep. Do you want to share your writings with Undead Walking also, please? Oh, sure. Yeah. So you can find all my writing at undeadwalking.com and we've got social media, of course, all of it, you know, uh, Twitter and uh, Facebook are the major ones that we use. And uh, yeah, so if you can just pop over there, you can see all the different things that I write about. <laughs> It's yeah. usually Walking Dead related or actor adjacent or that sort of thing. I try to, you know, find what the actors are going to be in next and things like that and try to share yeah. a lot of that to get them promoted for that. So, yeah, I love it because I subscribe to you. Or I It's just so informative and they're short reads. So you can just yeah. get through them quickly. Yeah. And there are things I don't think about or or you're recommending uh, some of the actors they're in other mm -hmm. TV shows or movies or what they're doing. It's funny. 
okay, this is uh, something separate. So my son always tells me what's on TikTok or what the memes are, whatever it is. So he has learned so much about The Walking Dead through doing all of that. But he had said something about the deer, the CGI deer, or the so-called that really yeah. wasn't CGI right. deer, right? And I'm and I didn't remember that part. I'm like, what are you talking about? So I look it up. And guess whose article pops up? I wonder whose article that was, because I think I was probably one of the only people that wrote about that. <laughs> yes, it was so amazing. So I was reading the article to my family and I said, look, this is what Renee wrote. So because I I didn't remember that particular scene because I, I think we might have talked about this. I've seen so much more of seasons one through six one through yeah. five like a lot yeah. like I've marathoned that a lot <laughs> and anywhere from six to eleven I've only seen at what well, minimum two three mm -hmm. times it might maybe a few more actually depending yeah. on what episode they are but not as much but so I couldn't remember and he was <laughs> telling me you know the scene where there's a carnival and I'm like what? what I don't know what you're talking about but anyway <laughs> you blocked it from your mind because it was so bad <laughs> So, um, of course, when I was watching it again, then I remembered, but yeah. to, to recall that there was a scene that there was a carnival. No, I didn't remember that. <laughs> I didn't remember the deer. All I remembered is the deer with the earlier episodes mm -hmm. with Carl and such. Yeah. So anyway, all to say that it was your article that popped up oh, and it was very informative and helped me figure it out. So thank you for that. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So the only news that I wanted to bring up is, of course, the Oscar nominations are out there and uh, I am going to be covering the uh, top 10 movies. So I've been watching all of them. So please be on the lookout for that podcast episode coming out and the Oscars itself. The ceremony is on March 10th and Cobra Kai is in production for season six. I love Cobra Guy. So I cannot wait for that. So I'm, ve I'm very excited. So, oh, we have some really good things coming out this yeah. year. So mm -hmm. very exciting. Okay. Now let's dive into unforgettable highlights that shaped Rick's leadership in this apocalypse, his journey and his evolution. And of course, we're going to be talking about some themes like leadership, family, resilience, and adaption. We're going to group this into seasons because it's easier for us to get through it. And then there's so many seasons, so we <laughs> kind of have to group them together. And so I, I do want to start with seasons one through three. And of course, we have to talk about the initial episode because that's where we meet Rick Grimes. <laughs> and, you know, he's this just really ordinary sheriff thrust into this apocalyptic world and, you know, wakes up after being in a coma and along the way, he encounters survivors who impact his story and journey and always driven by the goal of finding and protecting his family, which is why I love him so much. <laughs> <laughs> but in the first three episodes, Rick meets pivotal characters, including Morgan, Herschel, Michonne, and the governor. Mm -hmm. And so let's explore standout moments during this time and discuss Rick's leadership and evolution. So who or what uh, stands out to you in these few seasons? So I always say that these are my favorite seasons, probably including four though also. Though, you know, it's yeah. just, we learn so much and it's all the new stuff and it's a smaller cast and it's just easier to follow. There's just a lot of redeeming qualities about these seasons, you know? Yeah. But one thing that always struck me was Rick, you know, he was such a family, devoted family man. You know, the first thing that, you know, he wakes up and it's like, I've got to go find Lori and Carl. I mean, that's what yeah. he, you know, that was his goal. He, you know, heads right to his house and he's seeing things. He doesn't know what's happening. What the heck, you know, and that's when he meets Morgan, of course. And so, yeah, I just love that that was his first, you know, which would be a lot of husbands and fathers first thought was to find their right. family, but it just showed us right from the get that that's where his mind is. That's what kind of man we're looking at. Right. You know? And so it was just, that was such to me, that was, that just showed us a lot about him just starting out and, you know, befriending Morgan then, um, 
I, I feel that that like set him up for success in the apocalypse yeah. because if he hadn't met Morgan, he'd still be like, why are these, you know, these dead things moving? Why, what's that, you know, yeah, <laughs> because, you know, waking from a coma is one thing, but then to, like, okay, am I still in the coma? What's happening here? You I know. know. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, his dedication to Morgan and Dwayne after they parted was just, again, showed us what a loyal friend Rick was, you know, so we're, yeah. As we're doing this, we're learning all these things about Rick Grimes and it's just making everyone love him because he is these things, you know, and even after the outbreak, you know, that changed a lot of people or it maybe changed them, but also their true natures came out, you know, more. Yeah, exactly. But Rick still held his compassion. You know, we see that when he sees the teddy bear walker, he does not want to kill this little girl, but he knows he has, you know, at this time, I know what this is. I've got to do this. Yeah. The bicycle walker, he apologized. I'm sorry that you're- I know. <laughs> Who does that? You know, this, yeah. <laughs> and then even with Merle, you know, he went, he was like, you know, Lori and Carl, like you just, we just found you, you can't leave us. But he knew he as- a, you know, a husband, a father, a, a friend, a, a, a sheriff deputy, he couldn't just leave this man to die there, mm -hmm. you know, even though they left him, but he had, you know, so, you know, we learned all those things, I mean, very quickly. And it was just such a, it just built him up in our minds and, and made him our hero, you know. I have that written in my notes and I, I, I want to bring it up because I don't know if it's, Maybe it is other people's thoughts also, but we know he's a family man. We know he's committed to his family, but the fact that he wants to go back and even with the type of person Merle is, <laughs> and he doesn't really know Daryl either yet. Right. right. And so, but he's willing to put all that on the line to go back to get a, a man in the midst of all these walkers that he doesn't really even know that much information about and everything that he has experienced with being in the tank and all those <laughs> hordes. I mean, that's really scary, mm -hmm. but that doesn't matter to Rick. Mm -hmm. And that shows you the type of person that he is, the courage that he has and, and to leave his family after he mm -hmm. just found them to go do that. So I'm really glad you brought that up because that was a note that I had mm -hmm. also. Yeah, because I mean, Merle, all he knew of Merle was that he was racist. He was a misogynist. He was nothing redeeming. You know what I mean? He right. didn't learn exactly. one redeeming. If, if Merle at that time had a redeeming quality, Rick didn't right. learn about it. No. And yeah, so and and the other people at the camp, Shane, a lot, they were like, no, you don't go back right. to Merle Dixon, mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. it, it just shows us that, you know, but and, you know, Rick and Shane, man, that is just such a. You know, I always, how did they become such good friends? You know, did, did Shane suppress all that I, for so long? I don't, you know, like I said, you know, a lot of people with that we meet along the way, you know, their true natures came out. They thrived in the apocalypse because they were bad people. And they just were like, wow, now I have free reign. I have no, you know, there's yeah. nothing to keep me from being bad or a horrible person. Like, I would really love to know more about Shane and Rick's relationship before the outbreak. You know, and was he always that way? And Rick just, you know, they just don't seem to mesh well because they're not alike in many aspects or any, no. I don't know. Well, they and, were never put in those circumstances either. And <sighs> Shane did so much, but I guess <laughs> to Shane's credit, he would have done anything for Rick up until that time, you know, up yeah. until Lori and uh, Carl. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, because he was trying, he was the one visiting him. That yeah. He remembers visiting him mm -hmm. in the hospital. And there was something there at one time. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. I think his jealousy and his, you know, that he had Lori, he had Carl, mm -hmm. then Rick shows back up. Then that could yeah. have been what it, finally like, okay, that's it. You know, I yeah. suppose that could have been it. But, you know, it's. I, I understand him. though what you're saying. It <laughs> makes total sense. It's like, how do these two people get along when you? Yeah, and it could have just been he was not quite that way pr prior to or whatever. But yeah. I just love how Rick handled him throughout that whole time. You know, Shane wasn't on very long, but we a lot of stuff happened in the in the short period of time he was there. But Rick handled it so well because he knew him so well, and yeah. I think he kind of knew eventually he would mess up. 
You know what I mean? Like yeah. Rick, you know, it helped. It, it showed this to me showed Rick's ability to read people and to be a leader because he could read people and understand where they're coming from. And yeah. so he would, you know, it, their relationship during the, what we've saw after the outbreak really tested Rick's resolve because he had a lot of times to be just like, got to walk away because, you know, we're going to end up killing each other. <laughs> yeah. Well, and if you think about Rick, what he has done through all the seasons, sometimes he shocks us too. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. And so he, the Rick prior to this apocalypse would have never done the things mm -hmm. that he's had to do also. Absolutely. So I guess Shane did things that he would have never done either. So yeah, yeah. good um, point. That's very yeah. good point. Yeah. So, but I just always, I always liked how Rick handled Shane because he did know him very well and yeah. he was just not, I mean, they had some confrontations, but a lot of times he'd avoid those confrontations just because I think he knew eventually Shane would trip himself up and you know, the, his true nature would come out or whatever. So, yeah. yeah. But yeah, so that's, I don't know. And then of course, Rick and Herschel's relationship, that's just, uh, you know, that's the, I, there's just so much you could say. I mean, we could do a whole episode on that, you know, right. you know because Herschel just imparted this wisdom to, he was just helping Rick like he would a son or like helping him just learn from all the things, all mistakes he had made and things like that. And just all the different things he shared with him. And so that was, you know, it's something I feel that Rick is still carrying those life lessons and he will carry those into the, you know, the ones who lives. Yeah. I just feel like Herschel will always be there with him because of all that wisdom he imparted in him. So I just think that's, you know, of course, like I said, we could do a whole <laughs> episode just on that topic, but <laughs> I think we might, <laughs> I think we might at some point. Uh, I think, go ahead. No, no I, I wanted, I wanted to say, because we even see Herschel change a lot too in, um, you know, throughout the seasons. And, but what I think I really liked about Rick when he uh, got on the farm is he knew that that property was Herschel's and he respected that. And he respected that this, you know, man was trying to take care of his family, his farm, because Rick could have easily come in and said, we're taking over yeah. buddy. Yeah. We got manpower. Uh, or, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he could have, but he didn't. He wanted to, uh, that's what Shane kind of wanted to do. But, uh, you know, Shane wanted the guns and all of that. But mm -hmm. Rick was trying to, you know, have his group survive Sorry. and support his group. Bless you. But at the same time, he was respecting Herschel and his family and his farm and his land. So I really appreciated that you know how rick conducted himself there mm -hmm. uh, just everything with the walkers being put in the barn and how he was helping corral those he didn't know what they were doing and mm -hmm. you know when he went out on that sort of run i guess to go get walkers and, and bring <laughs> them back that was right before they yeah. found sophia and all of that happened and then of course that's when herschel realizes oh my god these people are really walker zombies they really are dead they're yeah. not coming back we can't fix them it's not just uh, you know a virus a disease or something yeah. Can't matter. <laughs> yeah um but rick was just um he just had this balance about him mm -hmm. about how he had to treat herschel and how he had to treat everybody else so i uh you know i really appreciate all of that but i want to lead up into the far there's so much happens and i know <laughs> we could deep dive into the first three seasons but we just don't have the time right now to do that <laughs> So what I wanted to say about Rick's leadership in this is that the aftermath, after he has to do, you know, kill Shane, because Shane's about to kill him. And unfortunately, Carl has to, you know, put, kill Shane so he doesn't kill his dad. And they make it out after the fire and everything. And they're on the road and they're trying to figure out things they are like, Oh, well, how did Shane become a walker? Did he get bit? Uh, you know, all of this is happening and Rick has to come clean about what he learned and he lets them all know they're all infected. And all of a sudden this tension between all of this group that he has been leading and this frustration and they're like, why didn't he tell us? 
you know, what's happening. And then Rick gets mad at them because he's like, I didn't choose to be the, your leader, but here I am. I'm leading us. Mm -hmm. I'm protecting us. I'm doing what I need to do to get us to survive. And they all question his leadership. Well, not Herschel, though. Yeah. And that's what I loved, right? Mm -hmm. um, but they all question it. And I love when he gives that speech and he's like, <laughs> you know what? You want to leave? You can go on out the door. I I'm okay with mm. you leaving. You're fine. Are you going to stay here? But I feel like that is really when he, one of the times that he really asserted his leadership mm -hmm. and how things were going to be conducted from then on. Because I just think that he became, his style became very pragmatic and he was focused on all of them surviving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that scene, I still never quite understood how they got all so upset with him because them knowing that what would have really changed at that point. But also Rick had to see that for himself. Like he is like, true. there's no way this is true. When he saw Shane reanimate, then he was like, crap that, you know, Jenner was right, yeah. you know? And so to me, I just didn't think that that was worthy of all that. <laughs> Everyone getting so upset because it was like, you know, who's going to believe that some guy that decides to kill him. I mean, the man's blowing up the CDC building, you know, and so it's like, who is this guy, you know, and everything. Yeah. And so, yeah. I don't know. I just thought that was, it was a great, it's great. It's an awesome scene. I love it. But it was just odd. Like, why did we get so mad? <laughs> well, I actually thought, and you're, you make a good point because that is true. He had to see it for himself. Mm -hmm. But I thought to myself, I might've been a little bit irritated too. Cause I thought to myself, well, what if somebody died in mm -hmm. front of me and I didn't realize that they were going to come back as a walker. And then I get bit because I didn't know that, have that knowledge. Mm -hmm. So that was why I thought maybe that they were upset about it. Yeah, that makes um, sense. But, <laughs> yeah. but, but at the same time, I'm always team Rick. I yeah. am. I just happen to be. And so Rick I'm thinking, he no has a good right? reason. People. He has a good reason. <laughs> <laughs> so just back off and let him be the leader here. Let Rick do his thing, do his yeah. stuff and things. <laughs> you know, and also in this in this first uh, three episodes, we do get our introduction to Michonne, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it sort of uh, showcases the beginning of Rick mm -hmm. and Michonne and how they interact because they both are a little leery of each other, right? Mm -hmm. Which as they should be. Yep. Yeah, it's kind of interesting when you go back and mm -hmm. you see those. Well, knowing what we know. <laughs> and knowing what we know now, we're like, oh yeah, we know you guys. <laughs> we're gonna be that couple. So yeah, I just I, I do like going back and, and seeing that and seeing Michonne's uh, strength and independence in this. Mm -hmm. And uh, but also that she's willing to tell them about Glenn and Maggie and mm -hmm. go with them to show them where they're at and yeah. uh they have a con and, common enemy in the governor. So yeah. that's, yeah, it's, they're like, okay, we'll set aside our differences here and we're going to get this guy together, you know? Yeah. Their unity, mm -hmm. you know, facing the challenges together. Mm -hmm. And of course we meet the governor, which we've talked about before. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he just, what, true, man, that guy. <laughs> Yeah. Again, we could do a whole episode on just him, <laughs> but let's move forward because we yeah. have so much to talk about. We do. So uh, the next uh, episodes would be uh, seasons four and five, which mm -hmm. are really pivotal. And I've shared with you that this is season four is like one of my, it is my favorite, mm -hmm. not one of mine. It is my yeah. favorite season. There's so many episodes that yeah. are just so good in this. And we also see what happens with Lori and you know, how, Rick's leadership changes, uh, you know, after Lori dies and also the confrontation with the governor and also, you know, encountering the threats with the claimers. And it just highlights Rick's protective instincts. And I, you know, also see that Michonne plays this crucial role in these intense moments. So mm -hmm. what moments or themes or, or, or what sticks out to you in these? Scenes? So, you know, like a lot of people, the prison, I love the prison. It's just one of my favorite times there, you know, it's rough at first, but then we see that kind of transition where things are running kind of smooth before the governor gets there and all that, you know, and so it's, it's just an interesting to see this little community come together and stuff, you know, 
And, you know, Rick losing Lori, it's, it's crazy because Lori was, she's one of my least favorite characters, but her, her death is one of the most heartbreaking yes. as a mom, yes. as a, you know, all this stuff. Yes. So you, you watch that. And then, you know, it, it just, again, goes to show, you know, Rick and his integrity and his, just all his positive attributes because he did love her yeah. despite their, you know, they fought, they had issues. They both didn't always agree on everything and just the atmosphere they're thrown in and stuff. But, you know, just the fact that he completely came unglued after losing her, you know, you could, there, you know, he did love her. And so, you know, that was always a neat thing to see, even though it was, you know, he came out on the other side, at least better for yeah. what he had to experience. And of course this, again, go back to Herschel and Rick, just a lot of their interactions during those is it was just, you know, we didn't know that that was the end of Herschel, but it was coming to the end. You know what I mean? And so yeah. just, he really did impart more wisdom to Rick. And, and then the, my, one of my favorite Rick things is of course with the claimer, Joe, you know, when he just, I mean, that was outstanding. I mean, yes. I was shocked when it happened and it was like, you, oh my gosh, what did he just do? But again, it's just, you know, he, he, lost Lori. And at this time he still thinks he lost Judith and he has Carl. He's got to protect his son. Cause that's the Absolutely. last person and Michelle at that point. He was, you know, they weren't in a relationship at that point, but they had mutual respect and they had yes. a friendship and trust. Yeah. Cause he was still trying to convince Carl at, I think it wasn't that, I think at that time he was still trying to convince Carl or maybe not anyway that, no, that was, yeah, yeah. He still would have been trying to convince Carl at that point that Michonne was worthy of being with them because it wasn't until after they found Judith that then him and Michonne start to Carl and Michonne start to be better oh, friends. And stuff. There's so many episodes. I'm like trying to remember the time. <laughs> in order. Oh, yes. Anyway, but I, think, I feel like they were already uh, friends yep. because that's when they go back and, and look for the um, pictures and all of that. No, I that think. would have been after no. they had Judith because they were getting a baby bed. See, that's what, yeah. <laughs> So You're probably right. I know, but uh, maybe anyway, I know, but I that's know. the beginning. You're right. But it exactly. is into that time already. Yes. Yeah. I think that so, they're, they're friends. They just become better friends. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Because when they meet up with the claimers, they don't know Judith is alive at that point, but anyway, whatever. No, it, they, know, don't. they don't. It, it's in that area, you know what I mean? But then <clears throat> during those, the prison and things, Rick's relationship with Carol was just, it was very interesting because, oh yeah, you know, she kicks her out and I get yes. why he did it. And she got why he did it. She understood, but most people have been like, forget it. I'm, you know, hold a grudge. I'm not doing anything for you. And she, how many times did they, she save them, <laughs> continued always yeah. to save them, you know? Yeah. And so it was just really neat. Um, but that's just how Carol is. And so I just, I, it was just a very interesting, uh, relationship and dynamic between those two characters because of all that went on and then she just saves the day like it's not a thing you know yeah. and yeah so those are some of my favorite I guess during that period you know yeah those are some of my favorite too uh I love Herschel so much he is one of my favorite characters mm -hmm. there's just something about about him as an actor mm -hmm. and uh just their relationship and how he was the father figure and how he influenced Rick so much mm -hmm. in parenting Carl and in helping him navigate what, what he should do, what he sees, um, because he does see that Carl shoots that kid. I want to call mm -hmm. him, I guess yeah. when the kid's ready to put down his weapon. And so, you know, Herschel sees that and tells Rick, okay, I think, you know, you keep going out, you keep going out and hunting and doing all these other things, but I think you need to be here and be with your son and teaches him how to farm. And that's when, of course, Rick becomes farmer, farmer Rick <laughs> yeah. for a while, but he needed it. Rick yeah. actually needed that downtime too, because he just did. Mm -hmm. He's always out there fighting also. And, and that's what we see so much of Rick is that he go, he goes out and he does all these things and he's a leader and he's a fighter and he does all these things, but then sometimes he needs to be bought, brought back too. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think Herschel, when Herschel was still around, he was able to do that for him. Yeah. So, and that's why I just love their friendship so much. And I think also that Herschel 
I don't know, just was able to spread a lot of knowledge, even about his uh, religious background and what, mm-hmm. you know, the faith that he had and how, what, how he viewed the world. And so he just shared a lot of that with Rick, which I think in turn influenced him. One of my favorite episodes is season four, episode five, internment. Mm-hmm. And it's just, just something about the way Herschel deals with everybody in, in the prison with the virus and helping Glenn as Glenn's getting worse, as mm-hmm. Sasha's getting worse. And the, you know, Lizzie and just everybody. I just love that whole thing. And we see Rick and Carl trying to hold up the fences so that the walkers don't come in and, and or Maggie actually is helping first. But then when Maggie has to go help her dad, because they hear gunfire, then all of a sudden Carl has to step mm-hmm. up. And we do see um, Rick have some pride in having his son next to him mm-hmm. doing this. And when they have to pull out the guns and shoot at the walkers, because of course the walkers breach the, the, the fence and co- mm-hmm. start coming in. I just love that moment with them too. <laughs> I just think it's really a special moment. And of course, then we see Maggie with her dad mm-hmm. and, um, and before then Rick and Herschel had some, uh, philosophical conversations, um, during that episode yeah. too. And then leads into episode eight, which is too far gone, which mm-hmm. is probably my favorite episode mm-hmm. ever. It just beautifully captures Herschel's unwavering optimism and Rick's willingness to compromise because mm-hmm. when Rick is trying to talk to the mm-hmm. governor, because the governor has Herschel and Michonne there and Rick is doing everything he can to talk him down. Like, just don't hurt them. No matter what you do, we can live. No, we can put everything aside and we can all live together. And I really do feel like in the moment that Rick is just doing everything he can and he'll do, he'll just squash everything that's happened previously. And let's just Let's just do this because he's trying to save them. Now, what would happen really later on if he did? I don't yeah. know. But I think at the moment that, yes, that that he he means everything he says. And I just love that speech that he gives. Yeah. And, of course, then uh, the governor does the unthinkable and, <laughs> and the prison is destroyed and everybody has to go their separate ways. And they're on the road and so much happens. Again, fast forward to the claimers which is, again, another one of my uh, <laughs> favorite moments, of course, seeing Rick very protective of his family. Because like you said, you know, he's, Carl is everything, everything mm-hmm. to him. <laughs> and so uh, oh, it was just a horrible scene that with that man. I just, I yeah. just did not blame Rick, even though it was very brutal mm-hmm. and um, I'm like, oh, just kill him. But he's all, no, I'm not going to just kill him. I was like, oh my God, Rick. Oh my God. Uh, but it, 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 yeah, that's one of my good moments. Yeah. Uh, All time favorite moments also. <laughs> but we also, during that episode, we do see Rick flash back to Herschel mm-hmm. and we see uh, conversations that we didn't see right? That he had with Herschel about uh, different things. So I really liked how they juxtaposed those, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the brutality that Rick was facing and also what Herschel's teaching. So I really, um, that was another highlight to that whole episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Seeing both aspects Mm -hmm. of that. And then of course we get to Terminus and um, you had talked about Carol saving, saving the day as she does as from them being eaten, um, which I remember that scene thinking, how are they ever going to get out of this? Exactly. Cause like, there's no way they're getting out of this. They are hands are zip tied, feet are zip tied. This guy's just slicing necks. You're like, this, this. <laughs> yeah, how they're never going to get out of this. What is going to happen? There's yeah. a lot of tension in that episode. Yeah. And then, of course, we see um, Carol blow it up. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, and they all end up getting out of there. Uh, but of course, that moment, I wanted to bring up the moment that Rick realizes what Carol has done, even though he banished her from the group. Yep. And I'm not saying he shouldn't have banished her, no. but. He made a decision. I don't know if it was right or wrong. Mm -hmm. I really don't know. He was trying to make the best decision he could with Tyrese. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And it is a hard decision because Carol made a decision that maybe she shouldn't have either. So Rick had to deal with what was happening there. But I just love that, you know, Carol is just amazing. And, um, but I love that he recognized Mm -hmm. what she contributed and that he apologizes to her Mm -hmm. and thanks her. And then when he realizes Judith is still alive, that is just (laughs) such a special moment. Yeah. Yeah. A really special moment. So cool. All right. So let's get into season six through eight. Rick faces challenges integrating into Alexandria, showcasing his adaptive leadership style. Uh, We see Negan's ruthless (laughs) reign and Carl's death, which profoundly impacts Rick, shaping his continuous evolution as a leader. And so what did you think of this time with Rick and company? So, you know, this is where it starts to get a little you know, we start getting so many new cast members. So it's very difficult. This, you know, and it just grows from there. It's, it's hard to keep up with all the different storylines and things during some of these later, some of the later even seasons. But I do love, you know, the one of my favorite when they, you know, the whole introduction to Alexandria and stuff was very interesting. And, you know, just seeing this community that's been protected by these walls and that sort of thing. But I love it when he just, Rick finally just has it. He's done with those Alexandrians after he fights with Pete. He's like, you guys, seriously. And he just freaks out. That's, of course, first time he says, we're the ones who live because we do the things and we're not afraid to do things. And then Michonne clogs him in the head. And it's just, you know, it's like, she's like, just, you've got to stop, you know? <laughs> and so I just, I mean, it's, it's very serious on Rick's part, but it's very comical as you're watching it because he just loses it. He's just like, you guys yeah. are idiots, you know, you don't even know what's out there. And so yeah. I love that scene is just, yeah. And you know, Carl's death, you know, I'm, I'm one of those people who I was not a big Carl fan. I know that's not a popular opinion, but I just, I don't know, but you know, to see Rick and Michonne and what they had to go through with that and to have him, you know, be the one, like, I, I, I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to put myself down because I don't want my dad and Michonne to have to do this. You know what I mean? It was that, that was gut wrenching. <laughs> and, you know, Rick, I mean, that since the beginning, his whole thing has been to protect Carl. Right. And he couldn't, he, you know, he shows him his bite it, this, it, we're not taking half your abdomen away. You know, we right. can't cut that out. Right. Rick is helpless in this. And, it is, you know, it's, you know, a testament to Andrew Lincoln as an actor and just, it, it's phenomenal. The whole, that episode was so amazing with the, where, you know, we're seeing the different parts and the different things and the, you know, just all the stuff that's going on in that episode. And yeah, it was, you know, it was pretty cool, but, and, and luckily he had Michonne to shoulder that grief. They could share their grief, you know, and they, and then they had Judith to, to continue you know, not that she really knew her brother. I mean, she was too little to really understand it or anything, but she, you know, they had her, but, um, yeah. And the Negan's reign, you know, I, th- I think that whole all out war thing went on too long, <laughs> but yeah. I know I had a purpose and everything, but it, you know, it just kind of went on a little bit long, but it so much happened during that time period because it, it was did. very <laughs> over multiple yeah. seasons and things, but, um, even, in his death, Carl influenced his father with his letter in which that's the only reason Negan's alive is because of Carl, yeah, you know, exactly. Rick mm-hmm. took to heart what his son told him. And yeah, he did. <laughs> so, yeah, so I, you know, there's a lot goes on in you know, some of those later seasons there up to season nine. I, yeah. It was, it was just tough to be a leader of any of these people during that time, because it, it, what do you do with a person like Megan, you know? <laughs> And then they right. and then Hilltop got introduced too, and he had to deal with those guys. You know what I mean? So like Gregory and stuff like that too. Yeah. You know. So it was there was just a lot that went on during. <laughs> it there is there's so many people. So I think that a lot of things you're right happened during this, and we didn't really even talk about. And it'll take too long to talk about Negan's reign and also him killing Glenn and yeah. Abraham and <laughs> all of that. But the reason I do kind of want to bring up. That is because Rick totally changed when that happened. Mm-hmm. 
he was like, okay, I have to pull back on, you know, how I normally do things because we need to survive right now. Mm -hmm. This is all we need to do. Let's just get us to survive. And then we'll figure out the next (laughs) phase of what we need to do. And that was hard because (laughs) Rick takes ownership of where everybody is at and, and how this group is going to survive. Um, because you do as a leader, right? You feel responsible for what happens to everybody. And he tries to do what's best for everybody. But at the same time, he is still focused on Carl and his family. Mm -hmm. So it's Carl and his family, but also what happens to the group as a whole also. And like I said, we see Rick change throughout so much. And you have to, you have Mm -hmm. to er er evolve constantly. You can't just be at the same note all the time. I know that in season seven, episode four, entitled The Service, um, I rewatched a lot of the episodes before our conversation Mm -hmm. because I just wanted to be familiar about the things that we were talking about. But this one uh, really showed Rick's vulnerability because he opens up to Michonne Mm -hmm. about Judith because even though we all knew, okay, mm-hmm. Judith might not be his, what is he? Because afterwards, when they were at the farm, they made it seem like, no, this is Rick's child. But they were saying it like, oh, this is Rick's. Rick's mm-hmm. going to be the parent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Shane. Rick's yeah. going to be the parent. <laughs> but we don't yeah. know. It's like, okay, what do you mean? Like, mm-hmm. uh, does that mean he's really the parent biologically or not? But you know, this is the first time Rick really says it out loud that yeah. he is not or doesn't think he is. Um, of course, back here in the little piece of my brain, I'm like, he could be. He yeah. could be. There's a slim chance. <laughs> <laughs> but his commitment is to Judith and that mm-hmm. he views her as his daughter. And that's yeah. just the way it's going to be. And that's the way she's brought up because mm-hmm. she's, she's Grimes. That's yeah. who she is. Mm-hmm. So, and I think she is too. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, it's just, it's like fact to the rest of us. She is. But I, I did want to bring up that part of Rick mm-hmm. and his uh, vulnerability yeah. during the seasons. And there are some negotiations with Jadis. And the only reason I wanted to bring up Jadis is because we will see her in yeah. The Ones Who Live. And so it was interesting to go back and see her as part of the garbage people <laughs> and, and such, because uh, we do see her different in the world beyond. And mm-hmm. of course, I'm wondering how she's going to be, which we'll get into that yes. in, in the next segment. But um, but I did want to bring her up because mm-hmm. we are yeah. going to talk we... about her a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And But we did see Rick when he met up with her. I kind of feel like he felt there was hope because again, he was trying, they were trying to figure out how they were going to... Um, combat Negan. And so they thought, oh, well, these are more people that can, you know, help us to uh, win this war against Negan. And of course, Rick has to show his ability by fighting Winslow. And so (laughs) we see a lot of resilience in Rick. We see a lot of determination and building allyship with other people here. And uh, you saw this, um, this determination that he had again, like Mm -hmm. it yeah. resurfaced during yeah. this time. So, and then, you know, we see a shift in dynamics as it goes on and about with Carl. I do like Carl. The only time I was really kind of irritated with Carl was when he was mad at his dad, when they left the uh, prison, yeah. and they all that scattered. He said all the stuff that he said to his dad. I was so mad at him. I wanted to reach through the television, <laughs> and smack him. But, um, but on his deathbed, he everything that he says to Rick, apologizing for everything, and that he understands why his dad did it. Mm-hmm. I was bawling. <laughs> yeah, as a parent, yeah. you yeah. want to know that you made good decisions, and you would hope that your kids would, you know, understand what you what you did was for them, whether it's right or wrong. You have, you can only make the mm-hmm. best decision that you can with what you have in front right. of you and the knowledge that you have. You don't know what the future holds and what they're going to think and what's going to happen. So the fact that Carl said everything that he said to his dad, oh my God, my <laughs> heart was just breaking. Yeah. And also to see everything that Rick had done for his son 
and the choices he made and, and just everything. It was, it was heartbreaking. And even to go back now again, knowing that Carl mm-hmm. doesn't live, because at that time, I don't think any of them knew, right? Because it was no. written afterwards, later, right? Later, later, but, yeah. um, so, you know, every everything that they were doing was that Rick was thinking that his son was um, going to out survive him. Mm-hmm. And also we see, I love that Carl encourages Rick to see a different way, which mm-hmm. I think is important and really the right way. Because if you hold on to grief and uh, revenge, it's just going to kind of tear you up inside. So I think that I'm glad that Carl told his dad that and that he wrote the letters and uh, gave him that push toward toward the light yeah. for now. And then in season six, episode 16, The Wrath, we see when he has to make that choice. But he's also we also see Rick um, thinking about his son when he was a little boy and, uh, you know, just holding that value of his relationship with his with his son and his family. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, they, the battle against the saviors and and Negan's defeat and that Rick decides what he decides even though Maggie is not happy about it and neither is uh, other people, which we'll discuss further. I feel like this episode really highlights the themes of moving forward and looking toward a better future without this violent cycle. And uh, yeah, I just think that Carl's letters were really um, showcased Rick's emotional growth throughout the season. Any last words before we uh, finish off? I don't think so. First we covered season. a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So as we wrap up this episode, we've only scratched the surface <laughs> of Rick Grimes' incredible journey. So make sure you join us for our next session where we will continue to explore Rick's leadership evolution and discuss the aftermath of the sacrifice of episode or season nine and our anticipation of the ones who live. So stay tuned for part two. (laughs) Okay. But before we move on entirely, I would love to know if you're watching any TV shows or movies that you would like to recommend. So I was sick recently, so I watched a lot of older things and that I did watch um, Harlan Coben's Fool Me Once on Netflix. And that was very good, which I've liked. I think I've liked just about all of his series they've done on Netflix. Um, we also started watching Louder Milk. Have you seen that one? With I have. It's kind of a dark comedy kind of thing. And we've watched, I can't remember how many episodes. I don't think we finished the season yet, but it's, it's I like it a lot. It's funny and it's like that dark comedy kind of thing, you know, and I know Ron Livingston kind of, he plays kind of the same character a lot. You know, it's just one of those kind of, I don't know, just his normal characters. I mean, it's very good though. And um, then had you watched, did you ever watch Wilderness? And I can't remember if I told you about that no. one. Okay, no. watch it. It is so good. It's a thriller thing that you don't know what's going on and all this stuff. And it's so good. <laughs> I, is it a movie? It's a, a series. series. A series? Mm-hmm. Okay. And, yeah. And yeah, I watched it and I started, I couldn't stop. Like I could not stop. Oh my gosh. Is your only one season or is it a limited series or okay. You know, there's one season currently. So I don't, I guess I haven't heard if it's been renewed or anything, but very good. And then we did start the first season of the true detective and I, we're not through the first season yet, but I was, yeah, it's really, really good, (laughs) which I think you're watching the other seasons. Yes. So have you never watched True Detective before? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> my mom you know, was like, you guys have to watch this. And I've heard so many people say, you know, yeah. especially the hype for the newest season, everybody was yes. so hyped. About that. So then we're like, oh, we have to take a look at this, you know? And so anyway, we're not through the first season, but loving it. Okay, and then awesome. I watched Something's Gotta Give. So this is a 2003 movie with Diane Keaton, Zach Nicholson. Francis McDor- McDor- yeah, and uh, Keanu Reeves. And I'm like, I'm watching this movie that I swore I had watched. And I'm like, I have never seen this movie. Wow. It was just crazy because I watch everything with Keanu Reeves. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I love that movie. It was so stinking cute. So anyway, yeah. if you haven't watched it, do it because you're missing out. And yeah. then while I, was, while I was sick again, I'm just pushing play. Like, what else can I watch? I'm bored to death watching TV. But I went back and watched the Chronicle of Narnia movies and discovered I hadn't watched the third movie. 
I thought I'd watch that, but that one was really actually very good. You know, a lot of times by the third, it's not so good or whatever. So anyways, if you haven't watched those, and I did watch all of the Jumanjis as well, <laughs> which they're always great. So anyway, a lot of old ones that I watched, but just to remind you, there's some really good old movies out there too. There are some, and then <laughs> there are times that people haven't watched them, just yeah. like you hadn't watched True Detective. So now you went back and watched it. So that's great. Yeah. Well, just like me. I hadn't watched Fargo. And so when season five came out, it's an anthology. So you can go watch each season separately. Mm -hmm. So I watched season five as it was coming out. Loved it <laughs> so much. Uh, Juno Temple's in it, John Hamm and Jennifer Jason Lee. They are all so good. But I went back and watched season two. And that is with Kirsten Dunst and Je Jesse Plemons and Patrick Wilson. Mm -hmm. oh, I really liked it too, a lot. And I think that's when they got together as a couple. So mm -hmm. I found it, I, I knew mm -hmm. that they had played in something together and that's mm -hmm. when they began yeah. their relationship. But now they've done a lot of acting together on different uh, shows or movies. I haven't seen the other Fargo, but I probably will because I really liked those two seasons. So yeah. I would highly recommend watching that. But see, I went back and watched season two and that's been out for a while. Yeah. Um, and then I too watched Fool Me Once on Netflix and I really like it. So I would recommend that mm -hmm. also. So back and I think it was actually New Year's Day, I went and watched the Iron Claw in theaters. I loved it. Did you watch this by the Not way? Not yet, but I want to see that. That looks so good. It's with Zac Efron, mm -hmm. Jeremy Allen White. I truly enjoyed it. It's it's the type of movie I like to see. Yes, it has to do with wrestling. It's about this wrestling family, mm -hmm. the Von Erichs, and uh, real life wrestlers and how their father was a wrestler. And then the whole family of brothers become wrestlers and how there's supposedly this curse, because if you know anything about them, uh, many of that family have died. Mm -hmm. And so it's how the brothers who have this bond with each other, because they wrestle together, but also just the sadness and darkness about this curse that happens to them. And is it their upbringing? Is it, you know, the times? Is it their, the sport that they're in? You know, it's all these factors that come together and it's just really well done. I wish it had received some Oscars or yeah. even Golden Globes or anything. <laughs> it would have been great. Um, I don't, I think it made the cutoff and maybe didn't, I don't know, but it was so well done and I highly recommend it. It just really hit me the right way, the soundtrack, just the way it's filmed, everything. So I was really impressed with that movie and highly recommend it. I also saw Saltburn on Prime and I saw this a while back. And when I first saw it, I'm like, what the heck am I watching? Yeah. This is like crazy. But then after, you know, when you, read more about it and you learn more about it. And then I realized it was a dark comedy. I'm like, ah, this totally makes sense now. <laughs> and uh, just for people that don't know, it's about an Oxford student who becomes obsessed with this aristocratic classmate and is invited to spend the summer at their eccentric family estate. And it's kind of crazy. So yeah, I, I did enjoy it. I did enjoy it. So, um, and it is with Barry Kogan and Jacob Elordi. So, and they're just, just two up and coming great yeah. actors mm -hmm. right now. Just know it's, it's different. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you got to kind of read a couple of things that, but I, I, yeah, I haven't watched it yet. Cause I've read a couple and I'm like, am I going to like this? It's yeah. There are some strange things. I, I think if you know it's a dark comedy and you can't yeah. take it too seriously, because if yeah. you take it like a serious movie, you're like, what the <laughs> heck is going on? <laughs> but if you approach it in a different manner, then I think it um, it lightens up a little bit okay. and is not so heavy. But yeah, there are some scenes in there. So, uh, so it may not be for everybody. Let right. me put it that way. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Renee, for your recommendations. And friends out there, if you have any recommendations for us, please give us a shout. And remember, Screens and Focus does have a Google voicemail that you can leave your um, recommendations on. And the phone number is 
8542. That is in our show notes. We would love to hear what you are watching. Okay, Renee, thank you so much for joining me on this Rick Grimes journey. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you for having me because I just, you know, I always love our conversations. (laughs) I do. I love them too. Thank you so much. And please stay tuned for part two (laughs) because we are here to break down the rest of it with you. All right, friends out there, thanks for joining in. We are grateful you joined us today and we hope something that we said today resonated with you, gave you a chuckle, some happiness, some positivity or inspiration. Don't forget to subscribe to our website at screensinfocus.com and why not share this podcast with a friend? We'd love to welcome more members to our TV club. You can find our website link in the show notes. And remember to keep watching, keep exploring, and keep those screens in focus. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.